uh, was sent into St. Petersburg, Florida by Ethel Minor. And the Ethel Minor, uh, who uh, uh, is the sister from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, who was there on 360 Nelson uh, with them in Atlanta, Georgia, she had come to SNCC uh, from the organization of African American Unity that was created by Malcolm X. She is the person who was responsible uh, for bringing the struggle of unity uh, with Palestine into the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. She's the one who organized uh, teachings and things like that to educate uh, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and Africans around the question of the relationship of Palestine and African people in the United States and other places. So uh, Mukasa uh, was sent into St. Petersburg, Florida uh, after I was arrested in 1966. And uh, he got there in early 1967. Ethel said uh, to Mikasa, you got to get down there because those comrades need help. And so uh, he drove into St. Petersburg, Florida, burned up the car that he was driving in, had to replace the engine uh, because he drove, uh, drove it hard uh, on the way to St. Petersburg, Florida, like we're driving hard today. And so Mikasa uh, is a venerable veteran of the Black Power Movement. And I think that's significant for a number of reasons, and I'll say something else about that. But uh, in addition to Comrade Mukasa and Comrade uh, Linda Leakes, I see uh, comrades here uh, from, uh, uh, you, it was mentioned that we have forces who are doing this mobilization uh, in Los Angeles, California. And one of the enduring uh, relationships that the African People's Socialist Party and through us, the African Liberation Movement has had uh, for the last 40 years or so is the one with Union de Barrio, uh, Mexican National Liberation Movement, uh, uh, headquartered uh, primarily in Southern California at this time. And uh, they have been with us all the time and we have been with them. So it's, it's very good to see the compos uh, from Union de Barrio who are with us here. They're also with us in LA today where we are doing the mobilization. I want you to understand that we are doing this mobilization in L.A. It's not just something that we're doing here. Some people have made the mistake in assuming that what we are doing here today on November 4th is in contention with something else that's happening here on November 4th. But we are not involved in attempting to see who can have the bigger peace march or the bigger anti-war uh, march. The fact is that Palestinians and African people are not engaged in simple marches and demonstrations of, for peace and against war. We are in a life and death struggle. Because after today, on tomorrow, Palestinians will still be struggling, just as they were struggling in 1964 when Malcolm X was there, just as they were struggling in 1967, when all of the white money, white leftists, white liberals, everything was taken away from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee because SNCC came out on the side of the Palestinians in the so-called Six-Day War. Uh, the fact is that we are engaged in a struggle against colonialism and there are people who would liquidate that, who would obscure that, who would have us marching in protesting to make white people like us. They said we are supposed to be fighting against racism. But how the hell do you know when you won the war against racism? I'm old enough to remember when there was an entire industry that was surrounding this question of unlearning your racism. You white people could pay a lot of money. Actually, if I was smart, I would have got in on the racket myself. White people could run, could 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 people could run earn a lot of money uh, by white people going to unlearn their racism. But guess what? After they got their diplomas, African people were still oppressed. White people were still on top of everything. Uh, the fact is that the question is against colonialism. It was against colonialism.
fix that, they're never going to take that little white asses too. They're not going, they're not going to Palestine. But they're here. And there's a struggle that we've been trying to invite them to unite with for 15 years. That's the struggle with black people for power over our own lives. But they're opposed to black people having power over our own lives. So now for the first time in 15 years that we've been trying to get them to unite with the struggle. I'm not talking about all white people. You know, you have to say that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just talking about the opportunist. I'm not talking about the reparations contingent that's going to be marching with us. I'm talking about the opportunist. For 15 years, we've asked answer to unite with us for as long as it's been in existence. For 15 years, we've asked the party for socialism and liberation to join with us. They never said why. There's, there's no accident that happened here. We happen to know about Palestinians who have come together trying to deal with this murderous assault that's being made on Gaza. Come together to try to get together and have a demonstration, mobilization, some kind of action. It was Ansa in the house who were there and said that we can't do it right away because they wanted to do it right away because Palestinians were being killed then. They said we have to wait until November 4th. This is the organization we had asked to join us on November 4th here. So they used the Palestinian question as a means of attacking the black liberation. They know that I'm facing 15 years in prison. But there's not. They know that Penny Hess and Jesse Neville are facing 15 years in prison. They know that this attack on the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement was the attack. It's like the canary. Uh, in, the, in the coal mine. Because once they attacked us, you saw these attacks start happening all around this country to people. That's why there's such a thing as a Tampa Five. Five students, the University of South Florida in Tampa, who were simply protesting because the reactionary governor of Florida had taken away the right for people to teach black history. They protested. They have been indicted by the United States government. That's why 61 people have been indicted and got involved in this struggle to stop Cop City in Atlanta. Uh, they did that because they want to stop this movement. They opened the door on the rights of all the people when they attack African people. And that's the way it's been historically. But they cannot win. I want 
to say in addition to what we're doing here, you heard that we are also engaged uh, in mobilization in Los Angeles, California. All kind of people going to be there because we've characterized this as a movement, an anti-colonial movement for freedom of speech. Not just African people, but all the people. Freedom of speech. And so in Los Angeles, California, Filipinos, Africans, Mexicans, uh, you name it, will be involved in the mobilization on today, right now. We had a demonstration this morning at the U.S. Embassy in Pretoria, South Africa. Should have seen it. You will get a chance to see it. Magnificent demonstration where Africans are standing in front of the U.S. Embassy talking about free, free Palestine, free Leonard Peltier in Pretoria. Drop the charges now. Free the Uhuru movement. That's in Pretoria in South Africa. We've also heard reports in London at the U.S. Embassy. The demonstration we had there. You know, in London, they like to brag about the Bobby don't carry no guns. The police don't carry no guns. I was a relative small demonstration, but comrades from West Papua were there, and there were comrades from other kinds of organizations were there, and the police came heavily armed with machine guns and what have you in London, England, that they like to brag about the cops don't carry weapons. They don't carry weapons, generally speaking, but the colonial question has come home to England, just like it's always been here in the United States. The reason they used to be able to brag that the police did not carry guns in England because the United States is a settler colony, born as a settler colony, just like Israel is a settler colony, a white nationalist settler colony that rests upon the foundation of genocide and oppression against the indigenous people here who live in concentration camps that they refer to as Indian reservations. We know that. We talk about how they're trying to move the people out of Palestine so that they can take the land from them and expand what they call Israel now, which is a white people's country. They know that we know what that is. That's armed gentrification. We've seen them do the same thing in Washington, D.C. that used to be referred to as Chocolate City. We've seen that in Harlem. We've seen that in, 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 in North St. Louis. Every place we look, that's what they do. They remove us because they can a settler colony cannot tolerate the people whose land they stole being there because we are evidence of the crime that's being committed against us to create themselves. So I just want to say we're going to go hard to the White House today. We're going hard because we're going snick style. <laughs> we're going black power style. That's what it's about. We say, and, and this is all the people can unite with black power except white nationalists. Yeah, we, you got to be able to get down with black power because they say that they support the struggle of Palestinians. They're quite quick to say, send relief to Palestine. Well, real relief to Palestine will come when we open up a new front against colonialism right here. Because Palestine could not last another 30 days without what they get from the United States. That's why they have battleships right now in the Mediterranean. That's why they got U.S. troops on the ground right now in Palestine. If you remove the United States out of the equation, those white people in the state of Israel will have to go back to Poland, will have to go back to Milwaukee, will have to go back to those other places. In, 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 in London, England, I told you how they came with guns and what have you. But I also want to tell you that they had planned to have a demonstration at the Israeli embassy. But the, but the British government prohibits demonstrations at the Israeli government. They say that's anti-Semitic. Wow. They have banned the slogan, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. You can't say that without going to jail in England. This, these are the countries that suppose to hold a free speech. They call themselves the ones who brought free speech to the rest of the world. But they would bomb my house at 5 o'clock in the morning last year because of what I said, not because of what I did. But they are not, they don't have enough French flashbang grenades or anything to stop this movement. The struggle against colonialism will prevail. There's no freedom for anybody on the planet Earth without this. And if you look around the world, and where you've seen socialist revolution, it's always been in the colonial countries everywhere. That's where the front has always been. Ho Chi Minh, who once said, he asked the Communist Party, he was a founding member of the French Communist Party. He asked them, 
what kind of revolution are you talking about if you're not talking about colonialism? He said that if you want to fight against imperialism, when you look in Europe, you're just fighting the tail. If you want to get the head of imperialism, it's in the colony. And that colony is in Palestine. That colony is in Washington, D.C. That colony is in St. Louis. That colony is in Venezuela. That colony is in Namibia. That colony is all around the world where we've been trying for the last 500 years to break out of this, this statement, this status of slavery that's been imposed on us. Victory. Free Leonard Pelletier. Free all the political prisoners. Free them all. Victory to Palestine. because we are winning. We will never retreat. We are not going back. We are not going back to the old timey days that they uh, used to be able to feel comfortable because all the slaves were calm on the plantation. 